After I decided to model myself in this project, of course I needed pictures of me for rotoscoping. I took pictures of me from the front and side and used them for the rotoscoping. Now, rotoscoping is when you use pictures in these viewports, front and side, to guide you during modeling. It can be either drawings or photos, as I've used. When I started modeling, I used the good old box modeling method, which is taking a box and sculpting it by extruding and editing polygons. But I then found a tutorial that uses a polygon drawing method that only works well in XSI. So I tried it. You start with the polygons of the nose, using the pictures as a guide, making the hole for the nostril and then extruding edges to form the outline of the lips. The lips are then made in the same way, extruding edges and moving the polys. Then the chin was extruded. The eye polygons were then drawn, separate from the rest of the mesh. After the basic shape of the eye was made, I extruded the edges around the eye and then welded the vertices to fuse those polygons with the rest of the mesh. The weld point tool was something that I used a lot during the modeling process. What makes this technique work is that edge loops are formed. These loops help the mesh deform more realistically during animation. Okay. The forehead polys were then extruded all the way to the back of the head. Then I started drawing the ear. Now this was the hardest part of the modeling process because it's tricky working and seeing inside the ear. There's lots of detail that's hard to see. It took me about three hours to make. After I finally completed the ear, I linked everything together to form the half of the head. Now why only half of the head was modeled is because it would be symmetrized onto the other side. At this point, I had my basic face, but a lot of tweaking still needed to be done. Here, in this image, the nose was tweaked a bit. Next are the teeth. What I'd done here was draw a curved spline. Then, I drew a polygon and extruded this polygon along the spline, forming the basis of half a row of teeth. I then extruded out polygons to form the first incisor. This process was followed to form the rest of the canines and the molars to form the top half row of teeth. Those teeth were in turn duplicated to form the bottom row and tweaked there. Then these two half rows were duplicated to form the teeth as a whole. I used duplicate symmetry for that. And as you can see, these teeth are my own teeth. They're not just teeth that I downloaded from the internet or something like that, because I have very unique teeth. So you can see that I worked quite hard to form it into the shape that my teeth are in. I then bent the teeth to gain some more realism to get a more natural shape to it. As you can see there, the eyes I created from spheres that were tweaked a bit and I just added a basic material on it there for now. Now for the tongue. A box was used and molded into a tongue-like shape by moving vertices and edges. Now our model had to be from the breastbone and up. So the neck polygons I extruded down to form the shoulders and the pectorals. In this process, a decision had to be made on what to do next, rigging or texturing. I decided to rig first, just to be safe. Jawbone, neckbone, headbone. But after I'd done the rig, I decided to texture before I envelope. Now, in texturing, this was my goal. To unwrap my face in Photoshop like this. It looks very weird, I know. But this is so that the skin can look more natural on the model that you created. Because my front and side views were not aligned properly, I took new pictures, front, side and back, and merged them in Photoshop with the healing brush, the clone stamp tool and the eraser tool to form this picture. Looks weird, I know. And I edited it to form my bump map. See how the hair is accentuated, especially the eyebrows. First, I tried a planar texture projection. It didn't work out. Neither did a box texture projection. That's just to show how I unwrap the eyes. That's how the box projection looked. Uncool. Then Leon gave us a tutorial on how Dr. Bunsen was unwrapped. This helped me considerably and I used a similar method for virtual spinello. Grouping the vertices of both sides into one half and tweaking them. This was still the old face texture. The one that was used for the rotoscope. At this point in time, I enveloped, assigning all the vertices of the jaw and the lower teeth and the tongue to the jawbone, as the orange shows at the jaw. The top part of the head and the eyes were assigned to the headbone, the rest to the neck. Here's the new face texture. 
there you can see the linking of the vertices sorting out the nostril mapping the basic look of virtual spinello was slowly but surely being molded in the texture editor once satisfied with my textures i started with mouth shapes for the lip sync these are some of the shapes i used a and i e eyes closed general consonants mm. P for p for th and v and f for v. this is just to show a mistake that i almost did not see all of my lights shadows were off when i switched them on it looked so much better this is just to show generally how the scene looked away from the camera view and this is how my camera view looked without the main virtual spinello mesh now for the moment you've been waiting for are you ready?